awesome. Oh, great. Right, okay. All right. Right, so is everyone looking forward to talking about some climate change for for the next while? It's I love talking about climate change. In it's my been such a lovely death. hot summer. <laughs> it's it's a very mm. important topic. It's the biggest issue our generation and the ones after us is going to uh, face. Um, I regret to inform you, it's a Brexit episode. Uh, <laughs> well, it's always a Brexit uh, episode because Brexit is forever. Podcasting is Praxis. Uh, my name is David. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Sanitary Nap Time. Um, and we are here with Elijah. Hiya, I'm uh, in the northeast of Scotland and I'm smoking a roll up so Jess Phillips is not more working class than me when I slag her off. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Alistair. I'm from the south of England and I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this is Xander. Uh, kind of the same story, though. I'm being punished. I am currently in Southend. I don't know now, what that means. To be fair to Southend, <laughs> to be fair from to Southend, it is an extremely hard done by um, part of Essex. So it's not like you're in Brentwood, in which case you know up against the wall with you. But... No, nobody deserves Brentwood, <laughs> <laughs> except Brentwood. Right. In the news this week. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just stretch that sound out for about an hour and a half? <laughs> <laughs> we had a plan to cover everything that had happened towards the tail end of last week, which was um, the Amazon fucking burning, Joe Swinson burning, um, <laughs> basically just every single liberal in Britain just fucking dying on their arse. <laughs> and it was going to be good. And then Boris Johnson had fucking ideas and things happened, and now everything is tits up. Um, so you so were going to get a good podcast, but now you're getting a bad one, and you can thank Boris Johnson. That's the excuse we're sticking with. It's literally yep. the worst thing uh, he's done. Thanks, Johnson. Um, That's provable. If you've, if you've not been living under a rock, you'll be aware that we are getting a no-deal Brexit forced through with what pretty much amounts to a coup. Although it is, in fact, oh. just... Well, it's, it's it's really just an archaic technicality we'll cover that, of we'll... the UK system. I mean, this is great. This is all fine. It's legal. It's normal. This is how it works. Um, it's, you know... Yeah, and, which is uh, why the rules are breaking is. down. Because they love a rule. Yeah. They love the rule of law. If, if you're following the rules, great. Everything's great with <laughs> rules. Uh, oh, oh, that's not actually working out for me now. If I can go have tea with the Queen as well, I'll pull out the handbook and I'll show her where there's a loophole so she doesn't have to do the thing that she wants to do. Sir, 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 Johnson's <laughs> breaking the rules again. Sir. I want to speak to the manager of the Queen. C- can, can you imagine? Just, like, it is, it is the end game of asking for the manager. Like, everybody write to the Queen. Is it? <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> I don't know. Is it is it worse to ask for the manager of the country or the manager of the queen? I'm not sure what's the greater order of magnitude there. Um, I mean, pretty much you got the queen, and then I guess God. But um, we don't really have divine right of kings anymore. So. Uh, well, I, I mean, know. one of them is already dead. So. <laughs> yeah, God is dead. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Wait, hang on. I... Right. So. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Go on. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> right so very quickly week, establishing the kind of podcast we're making here yes it's a shit show um that should have been the name um <laughs> <laughs> welcome to it's a shit show so this week boris johnson has sent jacob rees mogg um a, a chronic monocle wearer to <laughs> Go and basically say to the Queen, we would like to suspend Parliament a little bit longer than we normally would. Um, what the effect of this is, it's going to chop about five days off of the parliamentary time to actually debate Brexit, of which there is... I think it's... Is it, oh, I don't even have the number on me. Um, it's, it's a low fucking number anyway. It's really no. less than you fucking think. Is it, because I mean, there's a four-week... There's a four-week... Um, 
there's a four week closing of parliament for the conference season that's still to come between now <sighs> on day of recording 29th of August and the 31st of October well there was talk of um, they were going to try and bring something into parliament to suspend um, par- uh, conference recess basically but obviously can't do yeah. that now <laughs> no no. Well, I mean, none of the parties would agree to it because they've all either spent too much money on it and really want it to be successful, or they've spent too much money on it and really, really don't want to back down on it because it's the last hope they've got of keeping their members happy. Mm. Lib Thames. Yeah, the so, Weatherspoons won't give them their, their deposit back, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, you basically, it, a lot of... I've seen some of the PR defence from segments of the... Um, of the Tory base saying that this is just the normal prerogative of parliament that happens all the time. It's a normal thing, totally legit. It's not a coup. It's not a paragraph. It's not, it's not in any way designed to, to, to f- facilitate a no deal Brexit, which is kind of like saying it's normal to go on holiday. And then you go on holiday for two months, locking your cat in the house. And when people get mad at you that your cat starved, you say, well, I went on holiday. It's normal. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Come on holiday yeah, so, when your house is on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty oh, sure Boris yeah, Johnson so, tortured some cats when he was young. Oh, absolutely. Oh no, no, he he he, he stepped his game up and just um, you know, decked a pig. <laughs> well, well, there's uh, that too. I was gonna say, but the like, pig was tantamount, dead. Tantamount to torturing like homeless people by burning fifty pound notes in their face. That's real for American listeners. That's real. It's real. It's that, it, that is a thing that has happened. It is mind-boggling as well. How much of the uh, leadership of this country are actual mustache-twirling supervillains from weird nineteen-fifties cartoons? It's 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 nuts. Um, yeah, I mean, their the special power though is inbreeding. Like it's it's not really that good. <laughs> Incestio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck off. We've made it, what, 20 minutes, 10 minutes even, and you've already made a fucking Harry Potter reference. Oh, fuck God, off. no. <laughs> Is that Cancel. Was not? No, edit that out. Edit that out. <laughs> Your shame will live on forever. Keep it gone. I was, I was, that was oh, going for a superhero fuck. name, not Harry fucking Potter. How dare you? Oh. So, of course, in the run-up to all this, we had the uh, Lib Dems moaning about how Corbyn wasn't doing what they want to uh, as ever and Inexplicably. getting in the way of the idea of a national unity government led by the leader of the opposition to, to, to actually sort things out with Brexit and it's blown up in their faces because they've spent so long fucking about and just dilly you know and being complete stubborn uh morons Melt. that they now have nothing else to do they've got nothing i mean what what can a pro remain faction in the opposition of of any party really do is ah, stop corbyn that's it that's <laughs> that's more important i guess is is there any time oh, yeah. for a, a, a vote of no confidence is uh, if there was could it actually pass i mean what's the majority well, just now, what's the Tory uh, majority? Well, I think it's paper, one. On, pa- on paper, it's one, but that's not including um, suspended MPs, of which I believe there's there's at least one, possibly two, off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not great for the Tories if they have, you know, um, two, three abstentions. Mm. Who knows what's going to happen? Aren't the DUP mm. a bit shaky also, on this? Is it, doesn't doesn't the no deal? The DUP are. Fully on board yeah. with the proroguing. Yeah. yeah. Well, she, yeah, Big Arlene's already come out. She's come out from her wee cave. She's heard there's maybe some more money in it for her, and she's jumped on it. Very much living down to expectation. Yes. No. If, if there was a funny sound there, I was magnanimously drinking from my glass. <laughs> magnanimously? That's very kind of you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm honest, so... I don't know what the word is. For a... <laughs> <laughs> right, this so, is this we, is dictionary we've corner. Got, <laughs> we've got the option of a vote of no confidence, which probably won't succeed unless you get every single one of the Liberal melts on side, which includes the Lib Dems, who have been screaming into the void, Jeremy Corbyn is a bad man. Then you've got mm-hmm. big fucking subs um, <laughs> and her fucking milky band, <laughs> subs and gapes, and they're <laughs> vehemently against it as well. Even though, like, it would be awful, <laughs> and 
it's just it's it's probably not going to fucking work at this stage. It needs we need Tory defectors, and this implies that they have spines, which we all know that they fucking don't. Um, one prime example of this is uh, Ruth Davidson, the wonderful leader of the Scottish Conservatives, who former resigned. Leader. <laughs> former leader. Yeah. Former leader. Resigned. Who today. resigned. Um, because obviously, you know, there's lots of other reasons. She didn't resign on that day because of what happened. She resigned on that day because she wants to spend more time with her family, etc., etc. <laughs> it also, like the prime minister has her full support. It really does. I mean, well, I mean, would that be such a bad thing? <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> Careful. Well, would it be? Farms are very nice. I love spending time on a farm. Alright. An animal farm, maybe. Oh. <laughs> yeah, did you think of that? With pigs. Oh, fuck. Um. <laughs> um, so, vote no confidence right now, the way it goes, probably not a goer. It's worth a try. Aye. Maybe. Depending As opposed because to now, nothing. The, well, in the realms that we are now, if it's timed wrong, and it actually does succeed, but not succeed well enough to actually give us Corbyn as Prime Minister. Well, we, we could also end got... up in a no. We could actually end up in a position, depending on the timing of it, that we don't technically have a government well, decided. You've, you've also got to remember the fact that well, there's there's a few there's a few things actually. It's the fact that because of the fixed term Parliament Act, uh, if Thanks, we if, uh, if a vote of no confidence uh, is successful, the Tories have two weeks to shore up. Their their side basically to because uh, there's another vote after 14 days, mm-hmm. um, which uh, if they fail that vote, then uh, well supposedly the government is meant to resign and trigger a general election if um, the opposition can't form a form their own government. But I mean, so so you got to win two votes in a row basically. But on top of that, on top of that, you got you know you got our big blonde haired boy saying that he might not even resign. Before you even get to that stage, though, is that if even if he did resign and we did get an election, depending on the timing of this, because of all the gaps involved, Mm -hmm. it may actually end up being that the election that we want would take us past the 31st of October and we would automatically no deal anyway. So what they're basically doing is they're trying to lay a trap. They're trying to lay an impossible position for all the opposition that they cannot manoeuvre out of. Because anything that they do, if you know, if they support a deal, then they've fucked it because they've just supported a shit deal. Um, if they do nothing, then we get no deal. If they try and take power, then we may end up with no deal anyway, mm-hmm. and it would be their fault because then it would be out of the Tories' hands because they're not technically the government at that point. So it's it's quite fucky in a way. Like it, it's very it's very rules lawyery. Um, uh, yeah, and We've also. And, 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 I'd say it's almost Machiavellian, but that gives him too much credit. Uh, well, I mean, far too much, considering, yeah. Considering the fact that um, back in, oh, what was it, was it like May or June or something, um, they had a vote to essentially get rid of No Deal. And you had the absolute brain geniuses like Amber Rudd saying, oh, we don't think this is necessary because um, no one's going to do a No Deal Brexit. So it doesn't no. need to be ruled out completely through legislation. So they voted against it. <laughs> And um, I saw the other day that apparently Corbyn said to them at the time when they um, defeated the motion, um, when the Tories were all cheering that they, the, the you know Labour had been defeated, um, you won't be laughing or you won't be celebrating in September. Which, well, <laughs> um, yeah, that's where we are, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, a vote no confidence might work. It might possibly come through. The option that all the the Liberals are really, really hoping works out instead is that we can just legislate no deal away, which they still haven't grasped isn't possible unless you've got a fucking alternative to it. They're really, really hoping that they can just make it illegal to no deal because obviously, so long as you've informed the managers, everything will be fine. They'll take care of it, even though they are technically the fucking managers. Oh my God, it's fucking, it's mind-boggling, it's atrocious. The fucking stupidity. It's like you go through the they, years they don't of want the, to grasp the reality of it. You mm. go through years of, of, of the of the referendum campaigning and the years afterwards and you meet these idiots in the streets or at the stalls or fucking online and you try to explain simple concepts like the fucking freedom the the, the, the four freedoms or you know, you can't have 
your cake and fucking eat it too. You can't do everything you want. You can't have none of the bad bits and all the good bits. You fucking moron. And you think, that's fine. That's just someone with fucking iodine deficiency or lead poisoning or, or whatever. <laughs> you know, standard fucking brain damaged, you know, level of intelligence in this country. And you think, surely someone who's smart enough to, to you know, get into a position where they can run a campaign and win an election, become a politician, and maybe even if they're fucking duck thick as pig shit, spending some time in, you know, amongst other people with educations or with knowledge of things uh, might rub off on them. And then you get to this fucking result where they're still trying... It's, 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 it's just a fancier fucking worded up approach as the guy in the street with the, with the fucking... English flag going, uh, fucking, I, I moved you won, to, you lost. going to Spain, but Spain is letting all these bloody immigrants in, for fucking ruining my, all these Muslims, Muslims coming over from my the retirement. Oh. I fucking hate Gran Canaria, it's full of Spanish cunts, <laughs> aye, exactly, like, honestly, that, that's the, the level, aye, that's the level that you can end up fucking dealing with, think, it's, oh, fucking, the, the it's best... just nightmarish. The best thing is um, <laughs> Brexit people saying to um, you know Republic of Ireland people, you lost the you lost the referendum. Get over it. <laughs> 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 uh, well, <laughs> uh, so I mean, we I've, I've voted no confidence. Maybe, possibly, hopefully, hopefully, because uh, because Sinn Fein will surely take their seats. <laughs> yeah, that kind of fucking magical thinking. That, By that, God, that it's some things. Remainers have screamed that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sinn Fein are not going to take the fucking seats. Ah, <laughs> uh, why, why, why do people keep fucking bringing this up? Why won't they save England? <laughs> <laughs> what I like to call peak tannery. <laughs> um, just a com- the the combined ignorance, denial and pompousness and just sort of inherent arrogance of <laughs> that colours any involvement with, with Irish politics or anything it's, Irish related. It's, it's very it's on brand. From the UK sort of perspective. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's just fucking wonderful, man. Shouldn't be <laughs> fucking... Ah, oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Oh, wait, no, maybe. Because... So they've gone to the Queen and said... Please, Queenie, save us. And she's gone, no. They've gone, ah, oh, well, who hates the Queen? Well, it can't be any of us English folk. I know. Sinn Féin, they hate the Queen. Maybe they'll do something about it. Also, no. <laughs> if we want to, if we're, if, if we're thinking about ways in which we can do something with the Queen to, to, to change something in the UK political system, <laughs> Sinn Féin would probably be an okay place to start. Um, it's just from a very different yeah, uh, if anything, d- direction. If anything, I'm giving them too much credit. Uh, I mean, somehow, I don't think that's what people have in mind when they talk about bringing Sinn Féin oh, in. Yeah, but I like to think about it that way, though, because it makes it seem like yeah. a modicum, modicum of understanding of Ireland. I mean, I mean it, would be, it would be quite a radical fucking step change. Things have been said on Twitter um, to the point where hashtag general strike has started to trend. Yep. Um, there was a pretty big, fairly spontaneous pro- uh, protest yesterday, um, actually, on the day that this prorogan was announced. Courtesy of uh, Absolute Lad, Absolute Lad Owen Jones. Uh, shout out to well, him. Element of coordination, at least. And so it's not his fault there wasn't one in, in uh, Belfast. Since somebody on Twitter actually said that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, what? Say that again? Ew. What? Somebody tweets, is like, why isn't there a protest in Belfast, Owen? Why have you forgotten the Irish? Why <laughs> Why isn't there a protest in Belfast? And that's Owen Jones' fault somehow. <laughs> uh, I'm well, sure there will be can't... protests in Belfast they can look forward to soon. <laughs> well, you can't trust Owen Jones after he made up getting assaulted. <gasps> um... Mm. Question mark. Imaginary, well, imaginary hooligans. Three people being in custody now. Arrested mm, yeah, by imaginary thanks. police. Yeah. 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 Eat shit. You um, definitely. I mean, Fuck you. there's probably right. given. So yeah, there was this impromptu protest, but that that's one of the potential positive outcomes of a vote of no confidence is that even if it fails, it just compounds. It just compounds onto this feeling that we're being completely shafted with no at say at all. And it might finally start pushing people into doing something a little bit more than 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 sharing about a 
fucking change.org petition or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the petition's the only thing that's been getting really put out by Labour straight off the bat because it was the only thing really available. Obviously, we're yeah, at a point I mean, where... To be, it, to be fair, they did literally have MPs out at the protest mm. at the time. So, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, but I know. don't live in London. I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm just saying that. Um, I'm just saying it's better than nothing. Better than just a pro- just a. It was position. something. Something mm. right off the bat. Do this yeah. now. Yeah. Um, there is a there is a another kind of rally slash protest planned for the third of September on Parliament Square. If anyone wishes to go and is available for it, obviously I'm a bit fucking up the road and so is Elijah. But there you go. Right. Um, so there, there are there are other protests planned that this will probably step up. There is literally there is just but but this is the thing and we're talking about all these options. But if you if you just get down to the actual like fundament of it, there is literally nothing anyone can do. We have a fixed term parliament act. The government has parliamentary supremacy. It's the highest legal authority in the country. It can do whatever the fuck it wants, and it will, and it is. And th- th- there is literally nothing you can do. No amount of pressure. That only works when the, the person you're trying to pressure has a, a level of shame or self-awareness, yeah. which which is clearly I mean, it's, not it's, the case. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, a, a fucking a dog walk for Remain probably won't cut it this time. Yeah, fucking um, Christ, it's probably going to need to step up to something a bit bigger than that. We're going to have um, to get the EU will. Supergirl to come round with a machete. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Oh, don't remind me that she exists. Oh, I'm just thinking of the art, which is just terrifying. Is she still oh. on holiday doing posing for Instagram selfies at the and Holocaust doing Memorial? Racism. <laughs> And, Literally, oh, I'm and not even dancing kidding. in she Holocaust to... memorials. Oh man, oh. how 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 can you? Oh. People oh. still do that. Fuck. When I was in Ber- I, I was in Berlin, you had you had guys doing fucking parkour over the tops of the of the little oh. uh, blocks, the squares. Yeah, fucking it's, hell, you know. man. hell yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah but those are French people doing parkour. They don't fucking know any better. She's supposed to. <laughs> She, this is someone going on to, to to represent the international spirit and you know multicultural understanding of a European Britain. She should fucking know better. Or yeah, how do you represent something which doesn't exist? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. But the thing is, she doesn't even represent the thing that she thinks exists, which is incredible. She, rep- she represents the concept of grifting the centrist ads. As a, the thirsty as I, centrist as I, ads. Like, as I had on Twitter the other day, um, Brexit through the grift shop. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> which I believe I then pointed out to you is very similar to a Matt Ford show. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't see that. So um, no, I knew I didn't. No one did you, you had an extra joke. The grift element he didn't have. So you're you have fully one more joke than alleged comedian Matt Ford. <laughs> <laughs> alleged comedian. <laughs> Don't want to lie. Which I know is like the lamest. Be careful. Co- the lamest criticism you can have of a comedian, but. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like I hate him because he is the meltiest, most Blair worshipping centrist as well, that, that could ever possibly live. It's oh, did, he's also just did not John funny. John die, run out of blood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he can always source more blood. I'm getting sponsored ads on YouTube for Michael McIntyre clips. He's he's that desperate now. He's actually paying YouTube to, to put up his his own YouTube clips. As a sponsored yeah, ad, rather, rather than just as a recommendation, it's uh, fucking awful. Yeah, um, his, his but, career's odd. It's, Lee Evans had the same thing, where he just did arena tours, which I guess people were going to, but was doing, like, nothing else. You could just forget about him, besides when you're watching Poirot on ITV3 and he gets advertised. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we had Frankie Boyle in town last night, uh, which I nice. missed. I'm very sad to have missed that. Uh, apparently, it's full of jokes about the Irish finally enjoying a famine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, boy. That'll be great. But just, Amazing. That, yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on a little bit. So, we, we have forgotten the one true victim of all of this. Is it? Me? <laughs> no, it's it's none of us. It's none of us. It's 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 the poor old queen. Poor Brenda. Yeah, it's oh. the queen. 
Oh, when they took her into that room and sat her down at gunpoint, <laughs> Jacob Rees-Mogg <laughs> slithered along the floor to ask her to sign this. Like, and it's just fucking... How how can people assume this? It was assumed on Twitter that she had been forced to sign the order as if, as if she had no fucking choice but an immediate guillotine waiting outside if she didn't do it. Well, they were threatening to release, uh, you know, videos of Andrew... Which were false, definitely fake, <laughs> definitely fake, definitely no real f- videos or fingerprints or witnesses, <laughs> and nothing like that out there. Andrew is obviously a shiny, shiny special boy uh, who's you know innocent and definitely not a raving nonce. I can't believe. Uh, do you know what? It just blows my mind how he he has the fucking brass neck to come out and say, "Oh, when I hung out with my best mate Jeffrey Epstein when he was still alive, I didn't see anything improper." <laughs> Epstein was fucking in prison for a year. <laughs> full full for this exact situation. fucking thing. So it's not like it's not like he didn't know it was going on. I, I mean, <laughs> I just he threw a party. Up after he a threw year. A, uh, Andrew threw a fucking party for him when he came out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> I've not seen you in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah he just, he, he's been putting pictures up of Jeffrey Epstein all over the place. Like, have you seen this paedophile? <laughs> well, I'm sure, I'm sure oh, the royal family is very now, happy. If I put the bull gag picture on. Do you recognise him now? <laughs> <laughs> They're probably. Oh, thank God, you can't libel the dead. <laughs> They're probably happy enough. He libelled Prince Andrew. They're probably no, have uh, oh. everything. Everything I've said about Prince Andrew is uh, on the record and did happen. <laughs> they're, they're, they're... I mean, as as much as the the Queen is the victim of all of this, I mean, <laughs> it's 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 just it's fucking it's brain spiders pouring out your fucking tear ducts. That's how bad that is. It's wow, fucking what an image. <laughs> It's just. I mean, of all the people to be the biggest victims of this, it's not yeah. the people who are at risk of fucking not having access to the life-saving medication. It's not the poor people who can barely afford fucking food and have to use the food banks as it is. It's none of that. It's not that. It's the yeah. poor queen who had to do a thing. And also her Fuck loyal, off. loyal Oxbridge-educated comedians from the 90s. Could you imagine if the queen had to get rid of one of her solid gold grand pianos? I just, I don't know how I could recover from that. If she's gonna, oh, I, she's gonna wear a brooch when she signs the, the prorogue agreement. Oh, and it's the gonna sarcasm be brooch! An, it's, it's gonna be an, an, it's such an own. It's gonna be so <laughs> yes, queen. She's gonna slay. Uh, uh, fucking, I hate these people. It's just they're uh, the worst of the fucking worst. Yeah, so we're being hurtled towards this no deal Brexit situation by a queen with a uh, nice blue hat and a bunch of slithering incompetence in government. Uh, what it actually means for people is another thing entirely. I don't think we'll feel the effects immediately. But oh, that's what they're banking on, isn't it? Well, I mean, I might because I might get chucked out of the country. Oh, but, well, uh, yeah. You know, but- um, but well, but people that matter. Oh well, you know, aren't sure. gonna, <laughs> yeah. people that will vote for them. Um, we do have this wonderful leaked planning document, this uh, yellow hammer, which is uh, who came up with that fucking name anyway? It sounds um, like an art house movie. It's 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 weird, isn't it? It's it's like I'm thinking of yellow cake or something, or I don't know, some kind of. It's very very, very brass eye. So, something apocalyptic, <laughs> definitely. Um, I can only uh, think so... they were looking at a yellow hammer. Is all I can think of. <laughs> just looking around the room, just trying uh, to find out. What it was. Red tour uh, box. Uh, green fuse. Damn, one. I, really shouldn't have, I really shouldn't have written this in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've, sorry. <laughs> I've, um, Naming official documents yeah. after power tools. <laughs> Sorry, Apparently a yellow hammer. A yellow hammer is a bird. Um, mm. and the name oh, is derived nice. from the German armor bunting. So I can only assume it's the the party that the Europeans will be throwing after we fuck off and leave them mm-hmm. alone. Yeah. Well, I've had a comb through the document. Um, a lot of it is stuff we already knew. Food's going to get more expensive. We'll have less selection. Um, something that doesn't seem to worry people as much as it should is the effect it's going to have on our, um, what's the word, right on time shipments? Just in time. Just in time shipments, right. How, yeah. um, and so you've got this, um, this great bit here 
Uh, France will impose mandatory controls on UK goods. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That was going to happen, of course. But the actual numbers yeah. they give is on day one of no deal, 50 to 85% of HG, HGVs traveling via the short straits may not be ready for French customs. Now, that's a big fucking sort of area of, of uh, uh, yeah, so 50 to 85. <laughs> it could be half. It could be nearly all of them. Uh, you know... Uh, I don't know. It's, 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 give or take. And the, the <laughs> yeah, this is going to apparently reduce the flow rate of about 40 to 60% of current levels within one day. So that's oh, all fuck. the, yeah. So just like that, from one day to the next, you're going to have more than half of the actual supply coming in and out of the country is just going to slow. It, it's it's going to stop. Not even slow. It's, 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 it's They'll, they'll be trapped there for weeks. It takes that long to do, and fresh food's going to um, rot, and medicines yeah. will expire. Um, Absolutely. I'm just, and but I'm just in awe at the sheer hand waviness of yeah, fifty to eighty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be one. Could be ninety-nine. Uh, we're there. Is is this fifty to eighty-five percent analysis provided by the French, or is this purely um, like? Uh, British civil service, UK civil service. I don't know. I assume it's it's a UK document. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah, fuck knows yeah. what their sources are, but but dismissed as Project Fear by the government that commissioned it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it's been slightly updated. They've changed the font slightly, so it's better now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, they've they've uh, they've put uh, extra spaces in. Yeah, and you've heard people say, oh yeah, the the medicines will expire, but you, we can stockpile and we can have alternatives, and then you get to this part of the document where it says. Um, three quarters of medicines come via the short straits. Now, short straits, I'm I'm assuming is a, their term here for just in time deliveries or or, um, or short or the straits kind of thing. would be um, across the, be the, uh, channel. the channel. Yeah, yeah. So, so that kind of stuff that, that that just comes in on the trucks directly and needs to just get through and arrive. Three quarters. Yeah. Three quarters. It's the not. Is, it's not just some. It's not just you know one or two diseases. It's a full three quarters of medicines, just medicines in general. That's that's fucking nuts. If I can't get my heartburn not, pills, I'm gonna have a really bad time. <laughs> it's also all com- compounded by the fact that uh, there's been lots of reports of like um, because so much um, you know warehouse space has you know literally been booked up because it's Christmas soon. You know, mm-hmm. you start getting around to Christmas, businesses start thinking about Christmas. Oh, I imagine we'll just not have Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Christmas, Christmas is cancelled because of Brexit. But there's, so there's no room to stockpile anything. It's all been I'm looking taken forward up. to people weaponising Christmas crackers because it's the only thing they've actually got <laughs> abundant yeah. supply yeah. of. <laughs> it's people just start eating their like uh, plastic Christmas trees because it looks green. <laughs> <laughs> this is the closest I'll get to a vitamin for a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 very concerned oh. if I. If I don't have access to, you know, cheap fucking heartburn tablets, I might have to stop drinking, which is the worst <laughs> thing to do in this situation. Um, Are you in Aberdeen? Is there you need to drink to survive up there? <sighs> it's very nice up here, I'll have you know. Thank you very much. But... I've been, it's uh, not. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is this going to do um, anything to the I price mean, of a pint? Uh, that's a very interesting question. I don't... No, I haven't seen Is it seen London prices much everywhere? About or? this kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I think it depends on where you are well, and how close your access is to like, you know, your your sort of local craft breweries. Cuz most I can tell you I can tell you that it's absolutely going to have an effect on wine. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, we can all start drinking you... the white wines of Scotland. Most restaurants won't <laughs> stop them. All, all the stuff that we knew certain types of fresh fruits pile decrease, that's fine. Um well, it's, it's not fine, but you know, we knew that. The likelihood of this is considered low, I'm quoting, and the impact is likely to be local, affecting only hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> it's just like... That's, oh, that's that's people people under, like... <laughs> understated I, thing ever. Just a mere few hundred thousand. <laughs> and they're probably poor anyway. There's the, beautiful section, <laughs> there's the beautiful section on Northern Ireland where you've got phrases like disruption to key sectors and job losses are likely to result in protests and direct action with road blockades. Yeah, 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 sure. Northern that Ireland and blockades. That, right. nothing, given that the border <laughs> bisects roads in areas, it's not. 
entirely unreasonable to expect there's going to be a bit of a problem over there as 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 very on brand as it is for us to not really give them that much thought when we unilaterally make stupid decisions on us on our own and mm-hmm. it's a bit of an understatement i think is is the point here and then towards the we're sorry. yeah and then towards the end of the document you've got this great bit where it says so the uh, here's the section titled the poor and it's one <laughs> it's it's one line it is one line. Low-income groups will be disproportionately affected by rises in the price of food and fuel. One Same line. Oh, well, that's all right. Then. That's it. That's it. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's that fine. sounds. Yeah, that, that. Yeah, that's fine. That's, then, that, that's but, I mean, it's, it's a Tory government. That's that's your that's your regular state of being. That's, yeah, that's end game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's that's, that's what's yeah. going on. And then right after the that that brief chapter on the poor is the chapter on social care, which has a full three paragraphs. Pretty much saying the same thing about how it's going to suck for old people uh, because it's going to be less financially viable for, for other people to work as care providers. So we get the big three paragraphs about the olds and then the one line of, and, and just after the one line about the poor, which is a little bit of a throwaway. I mean, but that's, that's um, fine. I mean, the olds don't have to worry because I'm sure I'm sure health care won't be, won't be a problem after we open ourselves up to the wonderful caring and gentle invisible hand of the free market yeah that's reass- very reassuring to hear, to hear you say that and i'm sure it's not about to be cut down by the comforting the outstretched fist of the free market so great <laughs> so great so great speaking, for of, great speaking, <laughs> speaking of fists of the free market uh should we talk about a trade deal hell yes, yes. I fucking, okay, I fucking so... love a trade deal. Radical oh, shit, don't... man. Trade with me, daddy. <laughs> oh. we are, we are... Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we are all pro trade deal. Give it to me, my two fisted uh... trade partner. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, our, you know, glorious golden boy. Um, had, went, well, it feels like an age ago now, after all of this, all everything that's come out in the last few days. Um, so he obviously want, uh, he went to the US last week. Uh, oh, sorry, not the US. He went to the G7 summit to um, meet all of the wonderful leaders of the seven countries. <laughs> and so Boris Johnson uh, started talking about a trade deal with Trump. And obviously he's trying to make up, uh, trying to bring out a big trade deal to make up for... Uh, what is going to be an enormous post no deal shortfall in trade with the EU. Um, so in case anyone doesn't know what a trade deal is, uh, essentially it intends to reduce or remove tariffs on certain goods and services. Uh, it may include other things like determining what grade of, for example, food will be open for trade between two parties. Uh, and that's why all this talk of chlorinated chicken uh, has been in the news it's because the US is fine with it. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not great. Um, I mean, you say mo- that, but I'm very excited to finally have a McRib. <laughs> um, well, I think you need to take that up with McDonald's rather than Donald Trump. Oh, wait, no, that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, 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 I completely agree. No, that's fine then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, given the complexity, uh, the huge undertaking that any trade deal is, you know, these are got gantuan and sort of almost all-encompassing entities uh it's ridiculous to think that a trade deal could be agreed in anything less than say three to five years especially between a country as big as the fucking u.s and i know we are a shit country but the uk is a relatively big economy excuse me um, excuse you i think you'll find we've already signed a fantastic trade deal with Liechtenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Liz Trust didn't open those port markets in China for nothing. <laughs> pork markets? Oh, um, so, all that aside, um, it's pretty clear that uh, Johnson is either being deliberately um, incompetent or idiotic because now uh, he is, um, I've got a small, there's a few, there's a short quiz, I suppose that you'd call it, mm-hmm. um, for, my, for my fellow podcasters. Now, uh, our boy Boris Johnson uh, talked about a few uh, a few goods that uh, would p- possibly be opened up to uh, United States markets in the event of a trade deal. And um, 
I'll, I'm going to name uh, each one, and after I say each one, I'd like you to tell me how long you think the shelf life of that item is. So, mm. right, okay. Mm. So, bell peppers. A week. Five days. Okay, five days. Five days a week. Is that what final answer? Maybe I'm yep. not yep. eating so my peppers properly. Pretty much, pretty much spot on. Five to seven days. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, okay. So uh, we've also got Melton Mowbray pork pies. Uh, what do we think the, tr the shelf life of those are? 964 <laughs> years. <laughs> Melton Mowbray specifically. Um, uh, specifically, yes. Yeah. Which are, I believe, a, a pork product. <laughs> <laughs> the, the illustrious pork markets at last. Damn, she she knew what she was talking about. That Liz Truss. She, she She's had damn it. good. She, she, yeah. like three weeks. Twelve dimensional she pork. They're sort of glazed in lard, aren't they? So yeah. So what do we yeah. think the shelf life of these are? Are those the ones that they're come in the frozen? Oh, refrigerated? What, uh, yeah, they're they're not frozen. No, I think if you froze a pork pie, yeah. I would I, I would vomit in your eyes. So. I mean, that, seems, that seems uncalled for, but okay. <laughs> I'm going to say two weeks. Okay, two weeks. Um, well, I already gave my answer, but if we're being serious... Yeah, I think it's the two, three um, weeks space there. <laughs> I'm going to be... Okay, so, I'm, I'm going to go for a month. Well, you're all wrong. It's six days. Shit! Shit! Yep. Wait, these come in yep. tins? Uh, no, they're not tins. They're like a proper... These are proper. Oh, I'm proper thinking of. Pies. I'm thinking of Frey Bentos. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I um, was. Okay, yeah, so, so, so when, you, when we were talking about I all this time, they've been talking about it. You've been thinking of Frey Bentos pies. <laughs> <laughs> I sliced my finger open on on a on a Frey Bentos tin when I was at first year at uni. I couldn't get the damn thing open. Of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one year of your life, you'll eat one. Yeah, that was and, um, that was culture shock right there. Just, oh, there's a pie in a tent, what is this? That's very strange coming from the Mediterranean. <laughs> so, for the for this next one, um not a shelf life, but what size of the UK market do you think UK producer wines make up? What? Or, or, or what, the, of the UK, UK wine market? The UK food and drink market, or the uh, the UK? The, so all wines that are consumed in the UK, um, what percentage? Um, oh, sorry, imported to the UK or made in the UK? What percentage do you think UK? I think it's all imported to, to the UK or made in the UK. This depends. I think it's are all we? One it depends. I mean, are we I mean, counting... the grapes are grown and made into wine here. Right. Okay. Are we are we counting Lamborghini and Buckfast? <laughs> uh, I I've just got I can't I can't speak as to those. All I've got is a number in front of me for UK produced wine. I'm going two percent. Okay, two percent. Yeah, one and a half, two percent thereabouts. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one and a half, two percent, close. Uh, one percent of the oh. UK wine market. Yeah. Well, there was no, I, thought, I, I thought if I edged higher, I'd definitely get it. I thought mathematically it was certain. Now, mm -hmm. now, one last question for you. How long do you think, on average, it takes for a cargo ship to cross the Atlantic Ocean? Oh, I think that is like three weeks, isn't it? It's like, it's, maybe it's yeah, less. Th uh, yeah, three weeks, I think. Yeah. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah, sounds about right. Like 20 yeah, days? You're yeah, you're all pretty close. It's 10 to 20 days. Now, can Ooh. anyone tell me what the problem is? <laughs> well, I, I imagine it's all the water, isn't it? <laughs> there wasn't all that fucking water in the way. It'd be nothing. It's that they're not very close to each other. <laughs> this goddamn Remainer fucking ocean. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Bloody, no, yeah. <laughs> oh, now, so, now, of all the so... things that you've just said there, wine's the only thing we can actually fucking export, and we make fuck all of it. Yeah, and so, but it's not all bad news. The good news is that our wine production has historically been perceived as less than ideal due to uh, the cold climate. The current market, however, is growing. Recent sum warmer <laughs> summers have played a role in increasing investment and sale of wines. So, the global warming, not all bad. Thanks, Ben Azara. Yeah, it's impossible to see if it's good or bad. I mean, absolutely. I would say, I would say, you could, you could probably just try to like mass export Buckfast to the US, <laughs> but 
Americans die after drinking like a can of Four Loco, which is less alcohol and less caffeine and less sugar. So I'm not sure if they'd really cope. It might be a new version of what we did to China with the opium. Um. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That'd be pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm all for turning the tri-state area into the next buck fast triangle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've, got, I've got one final question for you all. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Johnson talked about um, talked to Trump about allowing British-owned and run cargo ships to move goods between American ports, which is called cabotage mm. because of fucking course it is. Mm-hmm. Um, does anyone know what the problem there might be? Well, it puts it the bit... tune of sabotage by the Beastie Boys in my head, but that's an entirely desirable outcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, apart from the Beastie Boys, does anyone know what the uh, the problem with this might be? The problem with using UK ships to transport goods in the US. Uh, to transport goods between US ports. So, right, like going, yeah. for example, going from Florida to somewhere in New England. Yeah. Um, is it that we don't have any ships? Well, there's an element of that, but there's also the fact that it is illegal for other ships that aren't that are not U.S. constructed, maintained, and crewed to um, move goods between uh, United States ports due to the 1920 Merchant Marine Act, <laughs> which <laughs> would be would need to be repealed in order for this to happen. I love me a good Merchant Marine Act. That's yeah. Well, we're in a position of strength. I'm sure we can, as with the, how as we will guarantee a great deal with the EU by exerting all of our incredibly yeah, impressive this... <laughs> bargaining position on them. All the leverage we have on them, we will likewise use on the US to abolish their protectionist policies in order to uh, send our ships over there. I mean, that's just... That's how it works, isn't it? We just, we just wait and wait, and we'll, we'll just be the more patient one. So basically, um, all these trade deals, they're just, they're just sewn up, ready to go. Yep. That's, uh, that's uh, my takeaway from all of this. I Nailed did, it. I did very well, much, received. I very much enjoyed the little bit, the exchange, where Johnson brings up the term cabotage and tries to get Trump to agree with him. And Trump's like, oh, yeah, well, we'll do great deals, many deals. It'll be very good. And just completely, like, he has no idea what he's talking about. He doesn't know Damn. what... Johnson's trying to like supplant the idea in him, you know, like sort of this kind of uh, subtle, what's the word? You know, the um, um, ah, uh, subliminally. That's it. So, <laughs> thank you. Inception. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to incept I'm, Trump. I'm with, pretty with sure anything other than subliminal Trump. won't work on him. I mean, it's a three-syllable uh. word, so he's already off to a bad start. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was quite funny. I find. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we've got such a, a strong well-brained individual that's able to speak to Trump. A big golden boy. A big golden boy to speak to a big wet boy. <laughs> and that crack team of trade negotiators that we've got. Oh, wait, no, those are all European negotiators. Shit. Uh, someone someone should have told us. Fucking hell. It's okay. We've, we've got a strong team. I mean, I'd, I'd like to go into a wee article now about yeah. one of the... One of the <laughs> extremely useful assets that we have in this country which is the eternal smoothness of the coming mind I love our assets <laughs> oh. anyone else get a semi there That's... <laughs> don't worry I'll take care of that for you right now it'll be gone momentarily I mean there's two ways um... to do that so <laughs> <laughs> it could go either way <laughs> okay so um one of the big monsters of the Leave campaign, you know, you know, everything, it's all fucking great, man, the theory with fucking liberals these days, and it's always someone big and scary and terrifying that does all this evil stuff. If it's not fucking Putin, it's someone connected to him, all that kind of shit. Um, the Leave campaign has Dominic Cummings. He used to be an advisor to Michael Gove. He's generally considered to be a bit of a prick, according to all accounts of people that worked with him. Um, yeah, according, to, according to people that met him. I think, according to people that met him, he's a bit of a shit. I think if your name is Dominic and you don't go by Dom, but actually go by Dominic, you're just automatically, you can be written off as a fucking cunt. He's, he's Dom Cummings, though. 
if that happens, that's that's already pushing the boat out way too fucking hard. I mean, I reckon if I put that into Pornhub, there will be results. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful journalist, Tom Chivers, from the wonderful <laughs> publication Unheard, which is just a fucking shambles at the best of times. He's wrote a wonderful article, which paints him in a little bit of a new light. Oh, so cool. he okay. starts Dominic Cummings and I share some interests to my slight chagrin <coughs> both he and I are big fans of the nerdy abstruse 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 bit of the internet filled with people who are sometimes called rationalists this is this is going to be the sapiosexual of political ideology isn't it <laughs> oh, do you know what? It doesn't even go. I think I yeah. think they're too logical for hard-ons at this point. I, just right now, so is this I, like... I reckon that what they've done is they, they wrote the initial article and then they said, you know what? I'm just going to do a control F. Furries for rationalists. Okay, that means a lot. <laughs> I, think, I think I would be, I'd have a lot less ill will towards Dominic Cummings if he was a furry, to be fair. Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely, All right, yeah. yeah. Carry on. Right, he goes on. They're a strange lot, smart and thoughtful, but strange. I wrote a book about them. They worry about AI destroying the world, but also about thinking accurately, about making good predictions, about doing the most good they can via charitable donations. Just, just to skip ahead here, I reckon that by the end of this, the reveal is that this article was written by an AI. Just putting that out there now. I'm just imagining you're still talking about furries. <laughs> you're welcome. I know that Cummings is a fan because he regularly quotes them. His blog role... Blog role. I, I don't know what that is, and I don't want to know. The Dom Cummings blog, blog role. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there will be results on Pornhub. His blog role includes... <laughs> his blog role includes... I can't fucking read that word. His blog role includes links to Less Wrong, Slate Star Codex... And Eliza Yudkowsky, three of the key parts of the rational sphere. <laughs> <laughs> His blog posts, like those of Scott Alexander, author of Slate Star Codex, are immensely long, although Alexander's are clear and funny and designed to hold the reader's hand through a complex argument, while Cummings's tend to be a grab bag of talking points thrown together with no discernible, to me at least, structure. So obviously he's not fucking clever enough for them. Mm but a lot of the material and the names mentioned are similar. Anyway, yesterday the Prime Minister Boris Johnson decided to suspend or prorogue Parliament for five weeks around conference season. He and his outriders have argued that one, it's normal behaviour, and that two, it's to push through his domestic agenda, but one, it's not, it's the longest prorogation since 1945, and two, it's very obviously intended to reduce the amount of time available to backbenchers to legislate against no deal or otherwise get in the government's way. BuzzFeed's Alex Wickham reports that they have various other plans to further obstruct any parliamentary oversight. So, so far, it's a little bit of a chug over him. That's all this is. It's just a wee bit of a wank over Big Dom Cummies. He <laughs> seems like he's really fucking clever. And some, Look how clever he is. And some absolutely awful using of the brackets. That's just ugly. He's doing a bad thing. And it's really bad that he's doing it, but he's doing it very cleverly, so we should pay close attention and enjoy it for the rational and smart thing that it is. I, I've just opened up DominicCummings.com to see his blog. DominicCummings.com? It, uh-huh. <laughs> and his latest post from June 26 is called On the Referendum, number 33, High Performance Government, oh. Cognitive Technologies, Michael Nielsen, Brett Victor, and Seeing Rooms. It is... It looks like what? it's it looks like it's multiple thousand words, including an introduction like an abstract. Below are four <laughs> sections. They're all titled. There's there's graphs and images. There's a what looks like a a, a, um, a scan of a geometry Picture? textbook. Um, changes to user interface. It is complete techno babble wank. It's the weirdest thing. So what you're saying is Dominic Cummings, ironically, it, 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 does not fuck. It, no, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I would. I would. I would encourage everyone to 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 check out his blog and just wallow in the sheer absurdity of this. It looks like it's it's less coherent than a Jordan Peterson book. This is nuts. Oh, 
find me a dragon diagram. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I, I'm going to push on. Aye. So it reminded me of something, and I was trying to work out what it was, and I realised it was the classic application of game theory to the game of chicken. Imagine you're playing chicken. That is driving your car head on towards another car. <laughs> Whoever swerves first loses. What's your best strategy? One game theoretic answer is you ostentatiously unscrew your steering wheel and throw it out the window. <laughs> on one level, it's limiting your options, so it seems like a bad plan. No fucking shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> From your opponent's point of view, it is a credible commitment that you are going to continue in a straight line. If the opponent wants to avoid disaster, they have to swerve and lose the game. The example was first given by Bertrand Russell in his 1959 book, Common Sense in Nuclear Warfare. Now, <laughs> let, so this, this... I'm just, this, just let, this, let the title of that book set yeah. in there. <laughs> common Sense in Nuclear Warfare. Is a bit, <laughs> yeah, um, so a little bit more common sense, I suppose. Um, so the theory is that you are driving a car into another car, so the presumption there is that both parties are going to be equally damaged by um, uh, the the most undesirable outcome, which is obviously the crash. Now, mm-hmm. we're talking about the EU, the 27, and the UK. It's not... It's really not like a car driving into another car. It's more like a car driving into a fucking tank. It's just completely asinine. Asinine, like... It's assessment of the of the political landscape. I think it maps the EU. The EU is, you know, would be negatively affected by a no deal Brexit. But again, they're gonna be pretty much fine. Yeah, but read, but let David read the first line of the next paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Russell thought it was a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> but the principle of credible commitment to a course of action formed a key part of the thinking of other game theorists such as Herman Kahn, Thomas Schelling and John von Neumann who were important in the development of the mutually assured destruction doctrine essentially nuclear chicken ostentatiously commit that's the second time ostentatiously has been used ostentatiously commit to the idea that in the face of any aggression you will render much of the globe uninhabitable for millennia and your opponent will not dare to be aggressive Richard Nixon approvingly called it the madman theory and it is most associated with shelling this is pure speculation I should say I have no special insight into Cummings' mind but I have a feeling that this is what he's doing here I know he knows about this stuff Shelling points and other game theoretical terms are part of the jargon in the blogs we both read. Dominic Cummings, Cummings is Dominic Cummings is real and he's rational and he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if you looked at uh, fucking Dominic Cummings' tweets, you get to see this fucking guy being like, "Yeah, you show him, Dom." <laughs> Dominic Cummings is my I wife. I don't agree with you, but I respect it. <laughs> oh, on you go. <laughs> this might be it. Might be a stupid idea, but you're doing it with a lot of conviction. You're doing it ostentatiously. <laughs> if you, can, and if I you can't do it that. smart, do it ostentatiously. <laughs> Cummings has posts tagged game theory in his blog and discusses John von Neumann at length. If I'm right, Cummings has convinced Johnson to throw the government's steering wheel out of the window. By making it harder for Britain to change course from its headlong path towards no deal, he thinks he can force the opponent to swerve. <coughs> Again, it all comes back down to this fucking weird idea that he's the fucking dark mastermind in the background who's just waiting and, and planting wee ideas so that you know all the worst possible things will fucking happen, and it's just oh, why, why did why does it have to be one individual fucking person? Why can't it all just be a systemic shit show that we all know doesn't fucking work and is terrible and has been trying to fucking collapse in a very specific way for quite a while? I mean, you can see what's happening in this guy's brain, right? It's this um, it's this combination of desperately flailing for, for, for some kind of reasonable explanation for, for what's going on, combined with a, a, a pretty hefty amount of bootlicking. Um, oh, I've got to lick those Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So he goes on, I don't want to buy into the widespread narrative that Cummings is some sort of all-seeing genius, though if this is really what he's doing, um, it's you don't want to fucking buy into it, but you're going to fucking discuss it anyway, you mm-hmm. fucking prick. What is this the whole, reason that, um, 
it's this whole fucking uh, marketplace of ideas bollocks, isn't it? It's like, oh, well, we just have to discuss the ideas and then we'll get to the best outcome. <laughs> Presumes yeah, that there's it, no it, such it, thing as a bad idea. It's that, but it just immediately falls into that liberal great man fucking great man yeah. theory where like, all of history is actually down to a very small select few people who were fucking terrific at what they did mm. as opposed to being widely systemic things that people ended class up falling struggle. into. Correct, because all of history hitherto at this point is the history of class struggle. Um, the reason the ostentatious Shoot. <laughs> removal of the steering wheel works in chicken is because you have one clearly defined opponent of a similar stature to you. If you're both driving Vauxhall Severas, then the crash will be equally bad for both of you. The reason it worked, if it indeed, if indeed it did work in the Cold War, is because there were two obvious main actors, the US and the USSR, and nuclear annihilation would be comparably bad for both. Is is Vauxhall... Not, so he's, re- he's recognised the point that you've brought up there, Alistair, like, yeah. yeah. It doesn't fucking work like that. Yeah. He's clocked it here. Let's see if he actually fucking takes it. So It's not got clear... His- He's gone most of the way there. Let's see if he can finish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's see. Will it be close but no potato? Let's find out. <laughs> it's not clear that the same is true in this case. For one thing, who's the opponent? Is it the EU? Or is it Parliament? <laughs> no. Oh, no he's not, he's, completely rather, interchangeable rather than, entities, those two. Yep, fucking, let's yeah. go fucking metaphysical on this. Why not? In Cummings and Johnson's... John, John Johnson's... In Cummings and Johnson's minds... It could be any one of them. Maybe they're trying to force Parliament to vote through whatever deal he gives them because the alternative will be a disastrous no deal and no time to fix it. Or maybe they're trying to force the EU to make changes to the backstop because there's no time for Parliament to block no deal. When you've got three cars in a game of chicken, it's much harder to model the outcomes. <laughs> oh, the fucking end, the fucking end body problem coming up in my fucking uh, game theory. Damn. <laughs> I think his intention by the end of this article is to actually just build some image of like, you know, eight cars all driving towards each other so that it just forms a union flag. Nerds! <laughs> more importantly, if it's the EU, then it's not two Vauxhalls of Fieras. It's more like a Fiat Cinquecento Cinque driving Cento. towards an oncoming train. Cinquecento, thank you. Um, driving towards an oncoming train. I know deal Brexit will hurt the EU, but much less than it would hurt Britain. Because the EU is much bigger than Britain. Wow, okay. really? I need to look at a map. Yeah, I mean, to work that is the out. most salient point he's made in about fucking ten paragraphs. Right. And there are worse outcomes for the EU, such as other countries seeing that they blinked first and trying similar strategies to get favourable deals from them. It may be that no deal is the least bad option available for them if Britain commits to it. Yeah, I mean, the problem with as the I train said, here is... Notoriously, trains aren't desperately manoeuvrable if there's if there's something coming at it. This isn't this doesn't. I'm not entirely sure that the whole scenario maps quite the way he thinks it does. Depending so, how you hit the train with the, the little Fiat, you could easily derail the fucker. Like he's well, not really going for the solid metaphor here. I mean, you could in theory drive three trains into one another, but they'd all be on track, so they couldn't turn anyway. So. Ah, the I mean, trolley seems... problem for the ages. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the, well, that problem is easily solved by a big spear with like a blade on the end, and then you can get the people on the other side as well. A spear of dancing. No, it's um, multi-track drifting. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, I'm speculating, but it fits my existing mental model of Dominic Cummings, which is that he reads these fascinating, interesting ideas from oh. brilliant people and takes Inside completely the wrong palace. message from them. <laughs> <laughs> For one thing, a key principle of the rationalist blogosphere <laughs> is two words I never wanted to fucking read out loud <laughs> or even read silently that we both it admire. Like a, it sounds like a fucking, um, I don't know, like an evil alien race in like some like <laughs> knockoff pulp sci fi. It's my new oh. wrestling finisher. All <laughs> oh. oh, right. So for one thing, a key principle of the rationalist blogosphere that we both admire is the principle of charity. The idea that if you don't understand how someone could possibly believe something as stupid as they do, (laughs) that this is more likely a failure of understanding on your part (laughs) than a failure of reason on theirs, rather than assuming people are stupid or evil. So what we all need to do... Yes. This is (laughs) is a damning idea here, right? Imagine the concept of Marxist self-criticism. 
but rather than actually like applying it to structural concepts and your place within them, you see something you don't understand and you think, ah, well, I must be too thick. I need to try harder and understand this. No matter what the fucking subject matter is. Oh, that appears to be a bit of a racist opinion. But is it? Let me analyse it now and see if it really is or if there's a hidden meaning to it. But like, guys, guys, what, what if fuck? what if stupid things are actually smart? <laughs> Holy shit. You've what, if, it. what if bad things are actually good? Um, oh no, we're doing the drill tweet again. <laughs> right, I just I do, I do need to brace you for the next paragraph. Right, okay. Okay. Oh no. My colleague. Oh my god! I'm sorry. That was an apostrophe. I'm sorry. Are you fucking Hugh Laurie out of a bit of Brian Laurie? What the fuck? He said okay, to himself, "Try, he's try this. There, but time is money." <laughs> Everyone, pretend. Pretend I'm tipping my fedora as I say this. <laughs> my colleague, Peter Franklin, thinks it's unfair to accuse Cummings of having an everyone is an idiot apart from me attitude. That may be true, but he certainly doesn't apply the principle of charity widely. He openly derides as a courtier the late former cabinet secretary Jeremy Haywood, for instance, who others have described as the smartest guy in the room. Must he not may be, be many right. people in that fucking room. <laughs> Jesus. He may be right, but it seems sensible to at least consider the possibility that this much admired figure had some understanding of how the machinery of government worked, which Cummings was missing. Mm. Oh, it's just this fucking smart people. Oh, I know so what room smart. he's in. He's I love in a, smart he, people. He's he's in a room of young Tories. <laughs> oh, that's an empty room, yeah. Exactly, there you go. Problem solved. Which, um, if somebody, if well, if somebody comes wait, knocking, he'll say the young Tories, but... That's just another word for fucking victims, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's much funnier than what I said, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I we'll, just we'll, wanted we'll, to get we'll Tory child abuse joke in there. Just, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see the big bit of silence on there. That'll be very easy to cut out. <laughs> uh, podcasting's hard. Another... It fucking is. Oh, right. <laughs> we'll push on. My back hurts. I'm having trouble coming up with jokes. I'm relying on tropes and voices for the humorous effect. <laughs> I need a little lie down. Can we come back to this later? I am lying down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another arguably more relevant principle is what is known as Chesterton's fence. The conservative <laughs> Christian G.K. Chesterton said that reformers often want to remove things because they don't understand what they're there for. He imagines one coming across a fence in a field and pulling it down because he can't see the point in it. The reformer is then gored by a bull. <laughs> a, wise reform, a wiser reformer, says Chesterton, would have said, if you don't see the use of it, I certainly won't let you clear it away. Go away and think. Then, when you can come back and tell me that you do see the use of it, I may allow you to destroy it. For Chesterton, the strange and sometimes incomprehensible workings of tradition are probably there for a reason, and if you start pulling on threads because they don't look important, the whole thing might come apart. Now, um, now, um, the big question here is, don't look important to who? Exactly. Like, there's no value of worth actually attached to this. There's no, there's no placement within a system that is actually appreciated within that. Are you telling me that a conservative Christian might have had trouble with seeing structural nuances across social differences or, or demographics because that is a fucking shock i'm trying to <laughs> i actually don't know if he is a christian or if his name is christian because it's capitalized but i don't really know what this guy's oh, right. okay. up to whether or not that deserves a capitalization it could just be gk chesterton for all i know but either way <laughs> i think it is GK, of, no but, i don't well, really I mean, think he is going to be that fucking no big on that i'm trying to enter the mindset of someone who just equates reforming with destroying which is a very interesting way of, of, of seeing the world and of understanding the co the concept of reform. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't think he's a trot. So, uh, just, 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 uh, just so everyone so everyone knows, um, his name is Gilbert Keith Chesterton, and uh, it looks like he is indeed a Christian. So, and he's also uh, a Keith. Elijah, so. Elijah's pretty much on, on the money there. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. Okie doke, right, I'll push on. Cummings may work for the Conservative Party, but he is not a Conservative in the Chestertonian sense. 
He's willing to erode the conventions of the British Constitution by suspending Parliament for political reasons and trying to keep them from voting on a huge and important issue. He's got form. In 2010, he and Michael Gove forced through legislation on academy schools by fast-tracking it in a way usually reserved for emergency laws, things like counter-terrorism. Oh, Chesterton nothing's and... ever gone wrong with stuff like that, no. has it? <laughs> Chesterton and the rationalists coming at Miles would be deeply aware of, e deeply wary of eating away at the various little conventions and traditions which underpin British public life in the pursuit of a short-term goal. My concern, oh. one of my concerns is that Cummings will be, come to be seen as the representative of the rationalists because he quotes them and shares some of their concerns and interests. But at the risk of being uncharitable myself, I don't think he really understands them. He thinks it's all about seeing how everyone else is wrong and applying game theory to politics and all that. And those things are important. I hate the start of that sentence. My concern... What are my concerns? You, you, you're typing. You could just correct that. <laughs> You don't have to say my concerns. Oh, actually, one of my concerns. You can just say, well, well, no, just delete well, that. One of my concerns. You've got to pad out that word count. <laughs> you definitely well he, had, well, he saved himself the Y space from my colleague. So <laughs> it's, it's inconsistent. These people, it, 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 it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's like, like he's inconsistent. It's only on health. It's not as if it's a big deal. <laughs> He goes final on. Final paragraph, let's do it. Yeah, final, final paragraph, let's finally finish this hell. But it's also about looking at your own thinking and seeing where you're going wrong and taking steps to make sure that you're not going to accidentally blow everything up with your brilliant ideas. Oh, that was almost like an actually smart sentence there. Maybe, yeah. I worry that Cummings isn't playing some clever John von Neumann-esque game <laughs> but driving his Fiat down the rails and expecting a train to swerve. I, I mean, <sighs> apart from the unnecessary rudeness about fiats, the, the whole article is <laughs> is basically what if Cummings not clever but dumb, which um, you you really didn't need to write all this about. Although I guess no, but I mean we he, wouldn't that's know he, that he's he kind a of makes that point. Yeah, yeah, he, he kind of makes that point of well, maybe he's not that clever. But he does that by sitting there espousing, espousing, I like all of this very smart and rational things, and so does he. And it's like, what you do, you're just you're, you're making yourself. Are you as dumb as him? Is he as clever as you? Which which fucking one is it? Oh, it's oh well. He's that, anyway. That 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 was our that was our oh, for the episode. Yeah. Um, that was so I'm, I'm man, glad that you all was enjoyed chore. it. The positive noises are great. That was fucking. It was a fucking chore. <laughs> it's tiring. I'm tired. You should have you should have you should have tried reading it three fucking times before the episode. <laughs> I'm uh, oh, I'm God. very tired. <laughs> right. Well, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna finish off with our last segment. Which as, as tradition dictates. I would like to be a regular feature. Yep. Let's play a game. Um, let's play a game, indeed. Let's play a game of comment or commentariat. So I am going to read you some little nuggets of text which I have found down the, the hot take mines, and I want you to guess was it someone who wrote the article or someone below the line who wrote the comment? How do we feel about that? All right, let's, I'm, I'm feeling good. Intense anxiety. I'm pumped, I'm hyper, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. I really want to turn this around. I think I'm behind the points. I think this is this is my last shot. Right, okay, let's go then. So, I listened this morning with horror. The essential message was put Labour in power or we'll let Brexit happen. Corbyn cannot get the support of the Tory rebels. It would be reselection suicide for them to put Corbyn in power. That's why Swinson suggested the father and mother of the house as a temporary interim government to stop the Vote Leave campaign who are now in government and their puppet masters, the rich offshore tax haven billionaires. I have no objection to Corbyn attempting to make a government first after a vote of no confidence. That is constitutionally how it's done, but he will almost certainly fail. He then needs to support a viable alternative. Was the mail above the line or below the line? Okay. Uh... Can I go first? I go on. Yeah. I so there is a there's a there's a there's a sort of airy flowery narrative style to it, like mm. in a sort of oratory component. It's quite um, long form for a comment. There's some there's some there's some shitty little sort of 
rhetorical devices used, very obnoxious. Um, the writing style just sounds like someone who probably did study writing, but or practice, or you know, worked at it, but what, wasn't very good. Thought thinks they're better than they are. I'm gonna say commentariat. This is a journalist. Okay. Hmm. See, my I think I'm gonna just be. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say um, comment just to be contrarian. Oh, I'm casting okay, vote. So See, I think. I reckon it's commentariat for many of the reasons already stated, and also because it didn't invoke anti-Semitism. <laughs> that's a good point, actually. <laughs> it did. I reckon, I reckon a comment probably, would definitely cool. crowbar that in there. It, 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 it talked about Big Bank Puppet Masters, which, as we all know... Oh, you're right. ...is, <laughs> is, is anti-Semitism because... So you, obviously you Jews. see it where I don't. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> right okay so we've got what one for commentary at and two for comment or was it the other way about yeah that's right i think commentary yep, okay you you're the one going commentary at the other two are going comment okay i can tell you it is a comment oh no shit way. come on yep. oh. that comment that comment came from the guardian Oh yeah, man! Yeah, well, that makes sense. <laughs> that sounds about fucking right. I, mean, I, I, I kind of right. assumed that it, I, I, that's the main source, right? Uh, no, no, no. I've got I've got various sources. Oh, um, <laughs> oh I, sure. I, I have gone to many parts of the mines, <laughs> many many parts of the hot tape mines. Of those smooth, okay, smooth next mines. one. The NHS austerity, tax cuts for the rich, and so on and so on. Just like a few months ago when the Corbyn shtick was all about telling Mike from Mansfield and Bob from Brixton that even though one voted leave and the other remain, they were one and the same. Corbyn still wow. thinks his best hope is to try and convince the country that just like him, it doesn't care about Brexit. Oh, comment sake. or commentary? Absolutely but comment. I'm, oh my God. I'm going to go commentary on that one. I'm going commentary on that one because that was so shit. I can only imagine a fucking... <laughs> It's so shit, Liberal someone had to be paid for it. Cunt journalist thought he were being real man of the people. Oh, There's <laughs> got to be commentary. It has to be. I, Elijah? I, th I, I think I agree. I think, that's, I think that is an awful, awful piece of writing, and that has to be a journalist. <laughs> right, so we're all saying commentary. Yeah? Oh, I'm saying comment. I reckon it's... Yeah, I think it's You're saying comment? Yeah, saying comment, Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, just, okay. just something it about... Is. I mean, the so on and so on. I just don't think that's something that gets into a... Yeah, professional yeah you wouldn't, you wouldn't it's, expect it's very, that to... You know, it's, 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 I, don't, I, I don't have the vocabulary for it. I'm, I'm not a... I'm neither a Guardian Word commentator band. nor a professional journalist. So obviously, I, I don't have the the vocabulary to, to articulate this, but... I, I, Mate, if we learn one thing from this fucking segment, it's that if. you don't need to have any fucking knowledge about anything to be a fucking commentaria. <laughs> Remember the commentaria. Fuck me. Oh. That one is commentaria. Yeah. Yes. That was... I'm so bad at this. Yeah, that... I knew it. I fucking knew it. That was no Tom way. Peck. Tom Peck and the Independent. Oh my god. What was the fa you didn't name the first me. one. The, the, I mean, presumably there was a, a handle against the first one. Oh, I, I haven't taken the handles oh. because comments are just fucking comments. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that right. I'll hunt them down and, and, and e-stalk them or anything, but I, I might have a lunch I'll tell you what, if I get any with a good username, <laughs> if I get any with a good username, I will fucking take it, right? Can we have their location, if that's possible? Can you see where they're posted? <laughs> okay, so you, you crossed the line there. Yeah, uh, can we get the location and the phone number for a hit? No, no, not because of that. No, because I want to be racist about people having shit opinions from certain parts of the country. just want to know where his kids go to school, all right? <laughs> There's nothing weird about that. Right, anyway. next one. Corbyn would never be allowed by the capitalist establishment to implement his socialist policies, and he knows it. He can promise whatever he likes, but if he, if he ever got power, he would inevitably trim most of it and quietly drop the rest. All governments do that. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go straight in comment. This is... Yeah, I'm feeling comment. This is, a, is, it feel, is This is some fucking South Park watcher, you know, 
both sides equally as bad. Essentially, nothing yeah. matters. Yeah. Truth is in the middle. Bullshit. It's, I don't think too... I don't think com- commentary would even acknowledge the existence of a capitalist establishment. I don't think that's the sort of phraseology yeah, they dare no, to use. No. It's also yeah, absolutely. it's also too nihilistic about politics to. To, to be a journalist, they have to pretend that it actually matters and, and things are important. Otherwise, they mm. have no reason to I- exist. I'm going to say comment. I don't. <clears throat> I think that's yeah. Right. So we're all going to comment on Absolutely, that one. Yeah. It is a comment. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. And I just want to say. Finally, I just want, yep. <laughs> I just want to say that so far the worst one of these that we've like just on its own merits the worst one has been the fucking commentary. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, the fucking independent and show on and show on shit. oh shit I hope that wasn't a Zizek piece was it? no <laughs> <laughs> right last one I am at a total loss why Labour should have the leadership that they have it's a time for ideas beyond the class system a time for building ah. bridges across the divides that are found all over the country ah. <laughs> <laughs> Toryism I'm not finished Toryism <laughs> has brought us to an edge the country needs forward thinkers for a modern age. The divides need healing. People need bringing together. There just has to be a better way. This is absolutely commentary. This is peak fucking melt journal yeah. bullshit. Yeah, this is like this is massive like appeal to like won't the adults and the grown ups and the manager all just turn up and take care of me just and rub be my head and call reasonable. me a good boy. God fucking damn it. I'll say this, this yeah, much. No, absolutely. Yeah. You, you can't be that melty and not be a no. gar- become a Guardian journalist. If this is a commentator, if this is a comment, then the Guardian should probably just just, just hire this person to like mm. you know to churn out the content. <laughs> Save a lot of money. Get rid of all they, the comments. Free fucking people. In, as it was we speak. Just, yeah. Uh, we need we just need to replace all all journalists with that fucking bot that creates articles based on <laughs> the first and last sentence because she literally the the, the stuff I've seen coming out of that bot are more politically aware and incisive than any of this just tripe. <laughs> right, that one was a comment. Ah! Oh, well, no. that was a comment on the BBC website. Oh, oh BBC. Fucking hell. <laughs> well, I hope... Oh. I hope something productive comes of that for someone. Because, <laughs> yeah, if anything, right. all yeah, this displays is that mail. <laughs> we can say all we like that the commentaria are out of touch, but clearly they're not. They have an audience; it exists, and they're as fucking melty and bad right under the line as they are above it. The absolute fucking worst. Let's end the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was that was a lot of fun, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Podcasting is Praxis. We will hopefully be back same time next week. And we will see you then. Cool. Thanks. Ciao for now.